Years ago, I, I got to tell this, and I've told it here before, but I was in a, a bar. I wasn't a Christian. Somebody say he wasn't a Christian. I was crazy as I could be back then. I didn't know much about God, y'all. I, I told you my grandma was a Christian lady, but I didn't really know much about it. didn't know how it worked. I didn't know if I always seen God and the devil arm wrestling, you know what I'm saying, and see which one good win or bad win. But I was in a bar, and uh, I was playing in a band, and I wasn't real good at playing country music. I was a rocker, and the guy that was in the band was teaching me to play country music. And that night, he quit, and he walked off. And they all looked at me, and they said, Biggin. Call me Biggin, I don't know why. And they said, Biggin. I said, can you do it? Can you do it? Man, and I said, man. I mean, I, I honestly couldn't play country music. I just There's different patterns. There's a whole different mindset. And I said, man, I'll do the best I can. I got real scared. And I went into the bathroom of an old moose club, wherever I was at. I remember it. And I sat down in there, and I started praying. And I asked God to help me play that night. I said, I'm scared. I said, will you just help me do a good job tonight? And he said, Eddie, that's crazy asking God to let you play in a bar and play good. I didn't know any better, y'all. I just, and he knows I didn't know any better. But I meant that prayer. I walked out that night, and I played better than I probably ever played in my life. <clears throat> and I've done licks that I didn't even know I knew. And I comprehended the patterns. There's patterns on guitar. There's rock patterns and country patterns. And once you get them in your head, you know where you're at. And you can play in those patterns, and you're good. And uh, that night I played, and they would turn around going, wow. They was looking at me going, you've been practicing. But I hadn't, y'all. I couldn't do it. But that night I did. And after that night I could play it. I could do it pretty well. That don't mean I was saved. That don't mean that, that I was on my way to heaven. It just means, and it settled something in my heart and in my mind the rest of my life, I just knew that God heard me. And that's a big deal. When you know God heard you, in that old bathroom stall, that moose club, he heard me. He didn't have to give me the time of the day. He didn't owe me nothing, but he heard me. And I knew he heard me because I couldn't have done it. And it always settled something in me that God's always listening. It just settled something. And I never forgot it. I knew God was always listening. He heard the good and he heard the bad. Did that make me straighten up and live right? No. I like to tell you that I fell on my knees and received the Lord that night, but I didn't. I went crazy for years. But in the back of my mind, I always knew there was a God. And I always knew he heard me. What does that mean? That just means later on, after I got done with life and life got done spitting me out and chewing me up, when I came to him, I knew he was listening. And I got on my knees in that little church in McDowell County, and I asked God, I said, I'm done. I said, I ain't running no more. I need help. I need you to get me out of here. I can't live like this. My mind, I just, I didn't want to live. I just felt... I just couldn't stand to face another day. I got really, really bad. And I knew God was knocking on my heart, so I said, okay, I give up. And he heard me again. And here I am today. 37 years later, God done work in my life. He'll do that for you. I just need you to know he's listening. One time, my brother Mark was going through a whole lot. His wife was gravely sick. Brenda was gravely sick with a real bad lung infection or lung failure. And, uh, I mean, she you actually coded one time, didn't you, honey? On the table. And Mark came in one time, and the only thing I remember, I looked at him, and God said, tell him I hear him. Tell him I hear him. And I said, Mark, God hears you. And I didn't know what that meant, but he did, because he had been asking God, do you hear me? Are you listening? Do you see? I hear you. And there Brenda sits, and she's got a good set of lungs, and she's healthy, and praise God, she recovered through all that lung transplant and everything with flying colors, man. It was just, they were amazed at how fast she recovered and how well she done. Somebody say, God's all over that, man. He heard you, Mark. Glory to God. He heard you. Praise God. And we were all praying. I just need to tell you tonight before I go on that God hears you. 
People say the Lord don't hear a sinner's prayer. The Pharisees said that in the Bible. They were talking to Jesus. They said, we know that God don't hear, you know, sinners' prayers. Well, that's a false statement. Of course he hears. The Bible says that he sees the good and the evil. He hears everything. If there's a bug over there passes gas behind that couch, he knows it. I'm sorry. I don't know where it came from. I just need you to know the littlest things on this planet, God knows it. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> God. Oh, Murray puts that stuff in my head, y'all. But God hears and sees everything. He made those bugs, and he knows if they're a little upset in the stomach. Amen. He knows everything. I want you to know how big God is, that God's all over everywhere. He's like the air. He's everywhere, and he's even underwater. He knows everything going on in the ocean. He knows every starfish. He knows every God created it. He's just a massive, awesome God. And through all that stuff that he knows, he still has time for you and your electric bill, you and your car payment, you and your sick baby, you and your sick wife, you and your trouble, your troubled mind about your job. God has time for you to sit and talk to him. Look at somebody and say, he's listening. Give Jesus a hand, would you?